Um, I think I'm in, but are you able to turn the lights on for me, please, Isabel? Yes, turn the lights on now, Graham. Ooh, this is nice. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Isabel. I'll let you know how it goes. Great, Graham. Well, have fun. Oh, but just remember, whatever you do, don't click on the... So, I've just been given special access to go and explore the virtual stamp show, StampX, that is happening from the 1st through the 3rd of October. It's completely online, and uh, it's hosted by the Philatelic Trader Society, the PTS. They've trusted me with this access, so I can go ahead and explore it with all of you. So, let's do that, as well as just explore the concept of virtual stamp shows in this episode of Hashtag Philately. The did I hang up on her? Thank you for joining in on another episode of Hashtag Philately. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so, as well as the bell icon for notifications when future episodes get launched. Uh, the previous episode generated a number of interesting comments again, so thank you very much for that. I read all of them, but I just don't have the time to answer all of you, so I apologize in advance. One of the interesting things that came up in the comments uh, was this curiosity around the commercial element of modern philately. This is in regard to the Sierra Leone uh, COVID-19 stamps that we discussed in the previous episode. And what that makes me realize is that we probably should address the darker side of philately. It's not, uh, maybe dark is not the right word, but philately is not perfect. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. Well, there's probably a rainbow and butterfly stamp out there. But because money is, of course, involved in flattening and stamp collecting, the hobby has its share of scams, frauds, forgeries, and just the odd person looking to make a quick profit off of you. Now, don't get me wrong, the hobby's not all like that. It's just a part of it. But it's a real-world hobby, so it's exposed to real-world problems. So I would like to navigate through that with all of you in these episodes. Actually, a number of you have pointed out that some of the stamps I've shown in my three seasons of exploring stamps were fakes and forgeries. So we have to address that. Why is it? Is that better or too bright? It's too... And so going back to the commercial element, it also makes me just want to clarify that I'm not sponsored by anyone. I am not being paid by anyone to say anything. I'm not trying to get you to buy rugs and canvas prints and stamps from certain dealers or anything. I'm just showing you what I'm finding as I go. But if I was to be sponsored or paid to say anything, I'll definitely provide a disclaimer and let you know. Your friendship and your viewership is the most important thing to me and to this channel. Oh, and the other thing that I got from the comments is that you really like it when I read letters and show you stuff that people send me. Noted, I will definitely keep doing that. But I'll probably not do any of them in this episode because look, we're almost four minutes into this video. We need to talk about virtual stamp shows. So uh, let's get started. component of philately is the social piece. It's the connecting with other philatelists. It's the sharing and learning from each other. It's the ability to form long-lasting friendships. And the big place that would happen would be a stamp show, whether it was nationally or locally with your stamp club. Well, since COVID-19, all stamp shows have been either put on hold or cancelled. The concept of a virtual stamp show is brand new, at least to my knowledge, and definitely at the scale. The American Philatelic Society did it back in August after they cancelled the Great American Stamp Show that was supposed to take place in Connecticut this year. They went ahead and pivoted to use online platforms to have their talks, discussions, and I think you could interact with dealers through it as well. Unfortunately, I was unable to attend it because 
It was during my work hours, and I already gave my vacation time up once I found out that the stamp show had been cancelled. But I did attend a couple social events after hours, and I really enjoyed it. What the Philatelic Trader Society is doing here is ambitious. It's bringing a lot of people together, and I'm cautiously optimistic. I say cautious because it hasn't happened yet, but I'm optimistic because from what I've already seen on the platform, it's pretty cool. What's also very cool about this is that I'm actually going to have a booth along with a couple other folks from the online philatelic community, including the punk flatlist, the digital flatlist. Oh, is anybody a Post Crossing fan out there? Because I believe that Post Crossing has a booth and I'll go check that out in a few minutes. Now, earlier last week, I was able to connect with Isabel Klempke, who is the PR and marketing consultant for the Philatelic Traders Society. I had to like wake up like really early because she's in London and yeah, it was like a really long day. But I was able to connect with her and discuss the virtual stamp shows, the concept of it, the making of it, and what we can expect in October. The Stumpex, the actual show, is um, twice a year physically held in, in London um, at the Business Design Centre. Um, and it's normally held in, um, in sort of like the spring and the autumn. Um, and yeah, so this year, obviously, with all the changes and things, so with um, uh, coronavirus and the global pandemic, you know, lots and lots of the shows were, you know, uh, sort of like closing and not happening. And we decided to make StampX a, a virtual show, which is so, so cool. Because what that really means for us is that we can connect to everyone all around the globe. So that is every philatelist out there, you know, coming together on this online hub. And, you know, it's just such an exciting feeling to be involved with that. And, you know, we're working on so, so many different things. So we're going to make this the real, you know, the coolest online virtual concept. Um, and it's the, you know, it's just so, so exciting. Yeah, no, it just blows my mind that it's now an international concept because I've been to a Stampex back in 2018. Thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed the business design um, center. That, it's, a, it's a gorgeous center, by the way. Um, yeah. And my experience uh, was just fantastic. So it's, it's difficult for me to visualize. But like you said, it's opening it up to the entire world. Now I don't have to get on a plane and fly over to London and spend a couple or three nights there to just participate. I can literally do it in my pajamas. You know, the beauty of this is that it's totally free. You log on from your home. You don't have to pay for a hotel or flights or anything like that. You can just have that experience from the, you know, the comfort of your own sofa, whatever time of day that is. So wherever you are, you could have, you know, we've got talks at night. So you can grab, grab a glass of wine and, you know, sit down instead of going to the theatre or like, you know, online theatre. I get it's all virtual now. So, you know, but you can do that. That could be your evening. You know, like, don't watch TV, come to a talk. Um, and there's things going on during the day. So like, you know, your lunch break could now, like during those three days can be like attending a, a virtual talk. And it's just so exciting. Um, we're working on the uh, talk schedule at the moment and there will be talks throughout the day as well. So hopefully no matter where you live, you'll wow. be able to come and attend a talk. Yeah. It's the no matter where you live part about this whole virtual stamp show that really has my curiosity. I want to see how that works. I want to see how we can all, as one big global philatelic community, leverage this. I think that's the exciting thing about this, or at least the most exciting thing for me. I've actually taken uh, three days off of work. Oh, amazing. For this. I mean, this is like the new vacation now yeah, that I've prepared exactly. for. I've actually taken three days off of my job so that I can attend the virtual Stampix. I think one that's of the really things cool. that I'm, I'm uh, building into my plan is that I want to be there London time for some of it. So oh, I want to be waking up earlier to, to attend some of it. But um, I understand because it is a 24 hour show, is that right? 24 hours for the full three days yeah. that literally anything could be happening at any time. Um, so we open on the first at 8 a.m. the UK time. Um, and then it's live for like literally 24 hours a day for three days or, so, you know, for the full 72 hours, which is super, super exciting. I mean, like um, the Royal Philatelic Society London are actually going to man their stand 24 hours. But, so 
I know, it's <laughs> wow. seriously cool. So no matter where you are in the world, so if you're in Hong Kong, um, you will be able to chat to someone at the Royal. If you're in Canada, you'll be able to chat to someone at the Royal, you know, so it's just that ability. And there's lots of other um, booth holders and dealers who are doing um, the same thing. They are going to be there, you know, for the, for the full length of time. I've spoken to um, companies who are based in Australia who are going to also be doing, you know, the, the, the 24 hours. So, and it's just brilliant that, you know, you can just think that at any moment, at any time, you can connect with someone. This just changes the concept of any kind of show, not just a stamp show, but any show that brings people together. In this case, philatelists from around the world are coming together to use a single platform at their convenience. It's a different kind of celebration of philately. It's interesting. Do you visualize StampX going back to completely being just a in-person event after this? Um, look, I think there's, um, I very much think that StampX, um, based in the Business Design Centre in London, will definitely, definitely go ahead and definitely be there. But I think there's definitely a place for virtual shows. I think that they can work well together. And I think that the exciting thing about these virtual shows is it just opens up the, the hobby to so, so many more people and to so many people who maybe can't travel or who can't afford to travel or who, you know, who want to just find out more, but don't necessarily want the expense of going to coming to London. And I think that that is in itself exciting. Uh, but I definitely think the, you cannot take away, you know, being able to meet people and actually talk in person. And I think that's so, so valuable and so, you know, special in itself. And especially after the last six months of not really seeing people, you know, people are excited about coming face to face and meeting again. And that is, that as well is just definitely definitely part of the hobby so yes that there's definitely they're definitely going to work together and i hope that you know virtual stampex will be around next year as well as stampex i think it'd be great i think so many of my viewers at least that i know of um just have never had the chance to go to a stamp show uh yeah. it's either too far away or they just don't have the time to do it this is a great opportunity for them to give it a go virtually uh, and um, hopefully one day we do go to the normal and we're able to see each other again at stamp shows and so on. But I think this virtual concept really is a great idea for the complete beginner, for uh, those who've never been to a stamp show before. This is a chance to do it and do it from the comfort of their own home. Yeah, I mean, exactly, exactly. It is super, super exciting. So next steps are if you haven't registered to go to, you said it's vfairs.com. So the, um, the website is stampex.vfairs.com. Okay. And you just register. It's super, super easy. You just enter your name and email and what country you're from, and then you're registered. Brilliant. And then you said it starts uh, 8 o'clock London time on October the 1st? Exactly. That's right. Great. And then I'm probably not going to sleep for three days. So that's, <laughs> Exactly. That's... Me either. Okay. So let's go for a walk virtually through Stampex. Uh, remember, it's still kind of being built. It's mostly complete. So there should be very few changes from what we see here. Uh, but right off the bat, we're in a very cool looking lobby. Now, there's a lot going on in the lobby. And this is really your gateway to each of the different aspects of the show. Um, you can see the booth hall is on the left here. You'll see there's the Spink Auditorium. This is where the talks are going to happen, as well as the Museum of Philately on the right, where we can go in and explore uh, that in a second. There's an info desk. And then these signs at the very back of the lobby are actually premium booth holders. And premium booth holders could be auction houses, they could be dealers, um, and so on. So you could actually click on one of those and it'll take you directly to their booth. Now, the first thing I'm going to actually do is take you to the booth hall. So we can just check that out and uh, find my booth. So, okay, so the concept of a virtual booth, it's actually kind of funny because I think a virtual booth gives you more than what a real booth does at a stamp show. It both together would show you from a distance who's there and maybe some information on what exactly it is that they sell. A virtual booth gives you a lot more, actually. You're able to go in and click on some of the things, and it can take you to different websites. It can show you a video. It can give you documents. 
It can give you links to their eBay store. You're able to do a lot with a virtual booth and then you're able to actually chat with the person if you'd like to. So if I go to this booth, for example, I can see who they are. I can click on each of the signs that are around there to get more information or take me to different websites. You can see at the bottom here is a listing of their social media as well as documents. It could be PDFs of their listings that you can add uh, to the, your virtual briefcase. A virtual briefcase in this case is actually sending all that information directly to your email so you can have it later to explore. But it's interesting because before even talking to someone, you can get a lot of information and then you can talk to them as well as video chat with them. Now, there's a lot of booths, as you can see. I think there's like 70 or more than 70 booths that will be at the stamp show. You can actually search uh, directly for the one you want. You can type it in uh, the search bar or look through the directory and go straight to it. But here is my booth that I've put together. So let's, let's take a look. It's a simple booth in which you can interact with it minimally. Uh, there's a website. You can go to my Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube channel straight from the booth by either clicking on the signs or clicking on the little tabs below. Now you will be able to interact with people at the booth, in which case it would be me at this booth. And you'll be able to chat, now, of course, I'm not going to be there 24 hours to man this booth, but you'll still be able to leave messages there. I'll be able to reply uh, and even video chat. Apparently, it has a video chat uh, capability built within this platform. It would be cooler if that guy looked like me, but anybody else thinking that we might be getting one step closer to the Matrix? This is the Stempex. Okay, let's see. Let's find the post crossing booth. Okay, here it is. World Postcard Day. Okay, for those of you who are post crossers, you probably already know what that is. For those of you who don't know what post crossing is, uh, post crossing is this amazing project that allows people to send and receive postcards to random people all over the world. And to take part, it's free, other than the cost of putting postage stamps on a postcard. Now, I definitely need to talk more about post-crossing. A lot of philatelists take part in it. Uh, it's a big deal in the snail mail world. And it really is an opportunity to see stamps from around the world that are newly issued because people are naturally applying those to the postcards. Now, the reason why it's World Postcard Day is because last year was the 150th anniversary of the postcard. This year, post-crossing is going to keep that tradition of celebrating the postcard on an annual event. And the 1st of October, the day that the show opens, will be a massive post-crossing meeting, you could say, that's going to take place here, virtually. So those of you who are interested in post-crossing or are post-crossers already, check out this booth uh, day of, October 1st, and see what's going on. All right, here is the booth for the Punk Philatelist. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Punk Philatelist is a blogger based in Australia. The Punk's blogs are quite fun and entertaining. Very interesting stuff as well. Now, the punk has an interesting story. It actually started as an anonymous writer, became two, and then Jared emerged uh, as one of the anonymous writers. And I'm looking forward to meet Jared. Actually, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing his story. Maybe he can tell us his story about how he became a blogger. But I was supposed to meet him at London 2020 this year. Of course, that got cancelled, but we were supposed to grab a pint and hang out. So I'm going to leave a quick chat message for him. Maybe he'll see this when he logs into his booth or maybe he's watching this video so he'll know. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to having a pint with the famous Punk Philatelist. Other than Punk, I see Stamp Collector Magazine, I see The Royal, I see Stanley Gibbons, I see a number of other big dealers, uh, BB Stamps. So I know I'm going to spend most of my time probably here in the booth hall uh, interacting with other booths and other philatelists. Going back to the lobby, I can see the Spink Auditorium. This is where I want to show you next. The Spink Auditorium is where the stamp talks are going to happen that uh, Isabel was talking about. From what I understand, the talk schedule is yet to be published, but once it is, definitely look through that and see what works with your calendar. Now, I believe there's a cutoff for how many people can actually be watching a particular talk. So it is first come, first serve. Make sure you log in on time or early in that case. Okay, so back into the lobby and into the Museum of Philately. Now, this is the court of honor that Stampex has usually 
uh, which is displaying famous collections from around the world. In this case, it's going to be the Museum of Philately that is going to highlight some very rare collections that usually aren't available for display or are held in private hands. This is something that you can definitely take your time with. Look through all the documents. Uh, there's a lot of information as well as great images and so on. So you'll be able to spend your time examining that uh, and exploring these rare collections. Okay, and then finally, back into the lobby, there's a very important info desk. This, if I click on that, this is actually gonna take us to a place where you can get IT support if needed. But this, of course, is where you can also download uh, the show guide. Okay, so stamps in the attic. This is interesting. If you have inherited a collection or you're looking to sell your collection, you'll be able to get it appraised at the show for free uh, by one of the leading brands that is at the show. I believe Stamps in the Attic is also a booth, but you can clearly get to it from this information center. So if this is something that you want to take advantage of, uh, start preparing for it now. What is this button? Do not push button. Okay, um, yeah, uh, I might have broken that. I'm sure they'll be able to fix it. Okay, so that is the virtual stamp show. That is what you can expect. I'm still very excited about this. I think the concept really is a neat idea, but hey, we will find out. October 1st through the 3rd, uh, we'll see how it goes down. I will be there for those three days. I don't know what my hours are gonna be, but let's talk about what you should do ahead of this if you're planning to attend. It's like any stamp show. You could just go and enjoy the talks, uh, go to the Museum of Philately, uh, browse the various booths and talk to different people. Or if you're looking to expand your collection, go through that collection now. Find out what stamps you're looking to get. Maybe do some research on the pricing of those stamps now. Uh, also check out what booths are going to be there. Maybe there's a booth that can actually satisfy uh, several of the gaps that you have in your collection. It's always a good idea to put together a list so that when you go to the show, uh, you can cross those items off as you find them and uh, keep you on track. But you, of course, could be very easily distracted by other cool items that are there that you're willing to add to your collection. If you are selling your collection, go through it now. Go check it out. See what you are actually selling. Put those items together uh, so they're readily accessible uh, to show someone at the show. Also, it might be a good idea to just do some research on what is a good price for those particular stamps. Also, get ready for those talks, which ones you want to attend. Wait for that show guide to come out so you can start marking your calendar. I'm probably going to have to stock up on coffee. So that's one of the items on my list to do. Now, of course, you'll find more information on the StampX website as well as register for free. It's stampx.vfairs.com. And I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts about a virtual stamp show? Will you be attending this stamp show? Will you go to my booth and at least leave me a message? I want to hear from you and I want to see what you're thinking. But thanks for watching. Happy exploring. And I look forward to the virtual stamp picks.